Hi fellow Prologers, uh, today Annie and I are going to mess about a bit with term expansion. So Annie, I've used term expansion once or twice but never really saw the point other than perhaps maintaining old code. Term expansion is useful for lots of things, not, not just uh, fixing old code. Maybe you better explain what term expansion is. Term expansion is really two multi-file predicates. Whenever Prolog compiles, it looks for this predicate in the module being compiled. If it exists, it's handed the entire term that's going to be compiled. If it succeeds, then Prolog will compile out instead of in. So I have some facts typed in like this. And although that's easy to type, it's not so easy on the programmer. I wish they were like this. But how can I make two facts for each one that I've typed in? So. Uh, if you return a list, Prolog compiles each term in the list uh, like this. So, uh, and uh, you can use an empty list if you if you want to uh, not compile anything. Uh, while I'm on the subject, you can expand declaratives. Uh, that would look like this. So if you decorate your term with this source location, the ID and the compiler and so on will know what file and position to report from. So for example, if you're doing something that includes a file in a special way, maybe you have a domain specific language, you probably want to report things as generated from the appropriate position in that file. So you said something about modules? Yeah, it first looks in the current module and then if it doesn't have a, a term expansion that succeeds there, it will look in, um, in user. The user thing, however, is not portable. It does not work in Sixtus. And what about goal expansion? Uh, so when Prolog compiles a clause, it's going to take each goal in the body of the clause and pass it to goal expansion. It'll also do that for the top level uh, goals. And then... Um, so that gives you a lot less context to work with, but uh, that's often easier to deal with since often all you want to do is swap one goal for another. So anything to watch out for? As always, debugging things that, com that happen at compile time can be a bit confusing. Um, these are multi-file pred predicates, so be careful that uh, make doesn't always clean them up. So you said there were other uses for term expansion rather than just uh, maintaining your code. You know the prologue pattern of having a predicate that calls a helper and uh, passes in some starter values. Here we've got uh, sum up, which is just a, adds the values in the list. And to do that, we're going to have a starter value. Um, if we were using this a lot, this is actually one more unification that has to happen just to get the zero in there. So we could instead do a, a goal expansion and whenever we see sum up two, substitute sum up three with the first argument zero for it. You can do interesting comp uh, conditional compilation stuff. And um, in general, anytime you have boilerplate in your code, it becomes clutter. Uh, and we've all worked on programs in some language where you had to write lots of boilerplate and it becomes hard to even read the code amongst all the boilerplate. Um, so you can really improve readability by using uh, term and goal expansion to cut down on the clutter. Sometimes you want to specify something and have it generate a number of predicates as we saw in our example. Uh, for example, the sweep uh, another example is the sweep prolog persistency library where you define a record and then you actually get a number of predicates defined to perform operations on that record. And of course you can use uh, term expansion to update old code. However, really fixing the old code might be a better choice. For example, you have data from several sources and it's inconsistent or it can be better to use a term expansion or goal expansion to rewrite that 
because then when the code's updated, uh, you don't have to do it all again. So Jan showed me this trick. Uh, sometimes it'd be really convenient if, if you had indexable arrays in, in Prolog. And here's a way to get pretty close. Um, here I've got a bunch of fun sayings and I'd kind of like to pick one of these at random, which would be a good use for an array. How can I do that? I can use a term expansion. So here's a term expansion that takes a global variable and expands fun saying to add an index and it just gets the, gets the old index, uh, increments it and sticks it back, back in for the next time. We can try uh, seeing what fun saying uh, two is and other than being in the wrong module, uh, we get our fun saying back. You can implement uh, all kinds of advanced type checking schemes or make even an ad hoc checker for some common error by using term expansion. So you might not want to modify anything, you might just want to like do checking for errors. So there's lots of uses for term expansion. Hey, thanks, Annie. I didn't realize you could do all those things with uh, term expansion. Sure, no problem, Sam. But uh, don't go adding term expansion without a good reason, because you can make your code more ex more confusing. Good advice. Well, I guess that's it for playing with Prolog. Viewers, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, that helps us make more Prolog videos.